The roof is open. A man who shared the coach's box under Nathan Buckley with Robert Harvey is Justin Longmuir, who's been good enough to join us from Marvel Stadium. Uh, g'day, Justin. Thanks for joining us. Will, will it be a bit strange coming up against halves? Oh, yeah, a little bit. It's always strange coming up against um, clubs that you've worked at before, um, no matter the situation. So, yeah, it won't, won't be too much different than um, coaching against Bucks, but, yeah, it's a unique situation. Did you send him a, a text and wish him all the best a couple of weeks ago? Was there, is he, has there been any dialogue between the two of you? No, no, I had a bit of a uh, text back and forth with Bucks, but no, nothing with halves. Um, I'll let him go about his business and catch up with him at a later stage. What are, what are you expecting um, today? The roof open, first of all. Is, does that change anything in terms of your preparation? No, not really. Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit about getting used to the ground. Uh, we, we've played here twice this year. Against Carlton, we were horrendous. And then against the, uh, the Essendon, we were pretty good. Um, we defended the ground really well and moved the ball pretty well. We just couldn't connect inside 50 on that occasion. So um, we drew on a bit of that experience during the week. Um, you know, we're going to have to be at our best. It's, it's a unique situation against Collingwood today. It's not as though they've been in bad form. They're, they've won their last two, um, beat the, t the team at the top, on, on the top of the ladder the last game. So. Um, yeah, they're not in bad form by any stretch. Justin, we look at teams, and you mentioned Collingwood, they're not in bad form. We always take the opposition into account, but sometimes we look at the, the, the road trip uh, background, the historical... I mean, you guys travel about as well as a barrel of Guinness, so you just will not get on the road and be any good at the other end. How, do you address that, or <laughs> is it brought up, or is it just about the day? Barrel of Guinness. Well, that's a, that's a new saying. I haven't heard that one before. But um, yeah, we uh, yeah we've addressed it. Of course, we have. Um, you know, we're always looking to improve. We've had we've had a bit of a mixed bag, um, and we've been competitive at times, but not consistent enough on the road. And as I said, like we lost to Essendon a um, couple of couple of travels ago here, here um, and and we thought we performed well enough to win on that game on that day. So. Port Adelaide game was really disappointing. We just didn't rock up um, at the start. We're competitive for the first two, uh, the middle two quarters, and then couldn't get it done at the end. So, um, yeah, we've, we're, we're a young group. Um, we're going to, we've just got to make sure that we um, we learn from these experiences. I think early in the season it was a little bit about familiarising ourselves with the, the the grounds. A lot of our players had never played here, never played in Brisbane, never played um, at the Adelaide Oval. So. Um, yeah, we've got to draw on those experiences and, and get better, um, and hopefully we can do that today. But does it become a drag on the players? Because you, you blokes travel up to five times more than most of the Eastern States teams. Is that is that contributive to the road uh, the road record? Yeah, it can be, um, and yeah, definitely at the end of the year it becomes a little bit more of a drag. At the start of the year, sometimes it can be good to get away, and it can be a bit, yeah, bit, bit of an exciting experience. But by the end of the year, when you've done it eight or eight, eight to ten times, it can be a bit of a drag. So we try and mix things up a little bit. We try and give our players a, a fair bit of um, autonomy and, and, and allow them time to do their own thing as well. So they're not around each other and and, and feel like it's a business trip all the time. But yeah, we're always trying to find those balances as well. So. Um, you know, we'll keep tinkering as the year unfolds and, and try and get the, the, the right balance with all that sort of stuff. Now, Justin, obviously the big news today is that Nat Fife is, uh, is out of the team. Was, he, is it, was it sort of something that only happened in the last 24 hours or was he always doubtful? No, no, it was a late call. Um, he's travelled with us. He, he got through training really well. Um, and he just didn't really feel 100% confident and it's probably got nothing to do with um, the pain or, or the shoulder itself. It's just about him being able to perform at his best and he just didn't feel up to it. So um, yeah, he'll benefit um, from another week off and we'll look to get him back against Carlton next week. Always frustrating as a coach, I reckon. When you look at the play and you go, have a look at this guy. How could he have anything wrong with him? <laughs> Bouncing around the rooms like he is. It, it sounds like an absolute line ball decision, Justin. How, how close was it and how, how much deliberation? Oh, absolutely, line ball. Um, you know, the, the, the docs were happy for him to, to play. Uh, he got through um, main training, but just didn't didn't feel like he, he was 100% comfortable. And, I mean, with a shoulder injury, you've got to be able to take the ball above your head with pressure on you. You've got to be able to, um, you know, put your head over ground balls. And we all know how, how Fife he plays. He plays a really combative brand of footy. So for him not to be 100% um, comfortable and, and make the call was something that I respected. And, like I said, we'll give him another full week of training and get that um, confidence in the shoulder up and he'll be right to go next week. You sit six and seven. The, the table's opened up just above you with Richmond getting rolled last night. Finals are still on the radar. 
Are you playing well enough to secure this opportunity that's in front of you? I just watch the last four to six weeks of your football and you don't strike me as the side you were at the start of the year. What, what's missing? What, what's lacking at the moment that takes you to the next level? Well, I'd love to get some continuity in our team. Um, you know, against the Bulldogs, we lost five players and had to replace them with five other players. We, we get Alex Pearce back now. We just need to get some continuity within our team, get them playing with each other. Um, yeah, sure, there's some areas of our game that need, need to continue to continue to improve, but I feel like we'll get a great benefit um, out of just having the same you know, 18 or 20 players playing with each other week in, week out. It's amazing, Durham. They've only had five players play every game this year, which is an AFL low. Yeah. Some clubs have had a dozen. You do need that continuity, don't you? We're looking at big Rory on screen at the moment. Can I ask you, and, and, I, and I say this with all sincerity, I find it disrespectful when a team, uh, when a football club in, in any state talks about another club's player, in this case Adam Chera, as if it's a fait accompli that he's leaving that club. It, it, what do you have to say on that? Like, there's a lot of, lot of clubs, a lot of noise in Victoria saying, we're going to get Adam Chera home. And he's still playing with, with the Dockers. Yeah, I, I personally probably don't don't like it. Um, I, I, I try not to comment on other, other teams' players. Um, but uh, I understand the speculation around Ches is a, is a good young player who's only got um, more growth left in him. Um, and I've said it a lot. Uh, you sort of judge a player on their actions in this situation and he seems as invested as ever in our footy club. Um, he's clearly putting in the work to make himself um, a, a better footballer, but also you know, he's surrounding himself with his teammates and... Um, yeah, no, I've got no indication yet that he'll he'll leave or he's disconnected from the group. So, um, you know, he's naturally a, a slower decision maker in these type of situations. The last time he was out of contract, he waited till the end of the year and then recommitted. So, um, you know, I'll respect his decision making and, and give him the time he's, that's needed for him to make the correct decision. Yep. Hey, Justin, thanks for your time. Just coming back to, to Harves, he's a very mild man and uh, composed guy, just like yourself. But as we introduced yeah. you, we showed a few <laughs> yeah. shots of you in the in the box, throwing water or looking to throw <laughs> things around. What's it like that pressure? Suddenly you are the senior coach and just trying to keep your composure when you got bad luck or players not doing what you asked them to do. Uh, it's a lot harder than I thought, Hutto. Um, I thought I'd be, um, you know, really calm in the box, and my missus is just flabbergasted when I um, lose my <laughs> lose my cool in the box because I don't I don't do it any other time. Um, yeah, it's a unique situation, and sometimes you just do feel helpless and. Yeah, I clearly overreact at times, but I'll try and keep my cool today. <laughs> no, we love, we love to see no, that no, side right come out. Don't. Good luck today. We really appreciate your time, and, uh, and good luck from here on in. Thanks, lads. Appreciate it.